excited about what we are doing. What we care about most is helping people build software quickly and safely and moving that software into production. We care about agility. And so these days, a lot of organizations are building microservices and they're building distributed systems. And uh, as part of that, they have to learn how to build distributed systems that are uh, robust, they're fault tolerant, right? So that's the theme of today's talk, right? Right. Uh, so, we care about that very much. Oops. We care about that very much, uh, but we we wanted to build something today that would demonstrate these concepts, right? And uh, we thought about what, what, what could we do to. Make we wanted to build speak? something both on the back end that can basically build to fail, because in software engineering, a lot of times we only build to succeed. We only test the happy path, and we want to kind of emphasize more on the sad path because that's how large systems scale, is they are built to fail just in one place or another, and everything still stays up. So um, we thought it would be fun to build something like a car sort of service. service. Some, yeah, as an example, the domain of cars, right? So, so there's we like cars, and we found this picture of a car that has the number 42 on it. Yeah. And the 42 number is magical, at least in you know, like American West cinema. Yeah. Right? And, uh, and 42, the reason it's on this car is because it actually was able to go up to 250 miles an hour and back to zero in 42 seconds. So it's a pretty impressive Bugatti. And, uh, and we also, I personally have a, uh, have a real expensive obsession with cars. I don't know if you've seen this one, but it's, uh, <laughs> it's a Volkswagen that I restored and it took me 10 years to do it. And uh, it's got a Porsche engine, so it's fast. Um, but still, it's a... Uh, it's an obsession of mine, so we thought, hey, it'd be kind of fun to, to build a service where Josh builds a back end that's resilient, and then in the second hour, I'll take over and build a front end that works even when his back end is not around using progressive web apps. Right. So, this is a fun fact that we found about cars. Uh, I think it's very relevant to today, because today we're thinking about electric cars are very you know, green and good. And back in the early years of the 20th century, horses were causing so much pollution that they saw cars with gas as a green alternative. Yeah. So, and so, so today, of course, cars with gas are the pollutants, the polluting cars. But back then, the horses, you know? <laughs> and so this is why you should never ask the user what they want, right? They, they always say, that, like, if, remember that quote? They said, if you would ask, if somebody had asked, if, if if Ford, the guy who created Ford, if he, if he had asked his customers what they wanted, they would have said faster horses, right? Not, not a car. They didn't know what a car was, so you have to leave. Anyway, moving on. Before we get started, wanna go? Is there another slide? Nope. Maybe. Maybe. Oh yeah, we got some before we, get, before we get started, I want to uh, get a phone. We have to prove to our bosses that we were here. Yeah, that's <laughs> a, okay. a good way to do it. Okay, right? everybody, uh, when we are, when we say open source, you you say open source, and then some way. Okay, ready? Un, deux, trois, open source. Open source. Un, deux, trois, open source. So anyway, the, the topic of cars is uh, you know the, the subject of a lot of different. Uh, of pop culture, right? So, of course, there's this great cartoon here. Uh, I want you to read this and appreciate it. Anchorage, Alaska is very far from most places in North America. It's way up in the corner. So they basically find a car, put a rock in it, and send it on its way. And what you automize it? There's one more. <laughs> huh? Wait, wait. One more. And voila.
So maybe it's good we don't have flying cars. Right. right. It's true. So, so that, yeah, we just want to establish that cars are really popular. We do this talk in a number of different countries. Every country has their car that they, they, that they like. I noticed that the Renault is very famous here. Is that very common? Are there a lot of Renault? Which is the car? C'est quoi la voiture la plus usée ici? Dacia Lowland. C'est Renault. Ah, ok, ok. Ah, ici, ok. I didn't know that. So, low Low cost, low cost, low cost car. That's not true. Which one is the most used? Oh, yeah. What? Bugatti. Bugatti, yeah, yeah, sure. Many cars. Okay, well, so we're going to build an application today. Just we're going to keep it on the topic or on the theme of cars. Uh, and so, so let's do that. While we're going along, we have some car facts. So we're going to educate you about cars as well. Like, for instance, did you know there's one billion cars currently in use today? Oh, one billion. In, in the whole world. The whole world. It's craziness. So we're going to build an application here at start.spring.io. How many of you know start.spring.io? Start point, spring point, yo. Yeah. It's my favorite, it's my second favorite place on the internet. After? My first favorite place is. Uh, what? Google. Gmail. Gmail. <laughs> 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 yeah, some good suggestions, but no, it's, it's production. Production. I love production. <laughs> you should love production. What? <laughs> you should go. You should go as often as possible. You bring the kids, bring the family. It's amazing. Production is the happiest place on earth. It's better than Disneyland. <laughs> but if you're not already in production, you begin your journey here at start.spring.io. If you need inspiration in the early morning, before your cup of te moraka or cafe, start.spring.io. If your children cannot sleep, <laughs> Start. That spring. <laughs> and if you suffer from indigestion, if you have trouble, in your, if you have pain in your stomach, after a long night of WebSphere and PHP, start. <laughs> that spring. Bye bye. Bye <laughs> So we're going to build a new application today. We're going to build a new application here using the latest and greatest uh, uh, sort of Spring Boot, Spring Boot 2.0 M6. We're going to build a new application that's called the Car Catalog Service. All right. Yep. Now we're going to use the reactive web support in Spring 5. We're going to look at the reactive uh, web support in Spring 5, Spring Web Flex. We're going to use a database. Now Spring 5 has a has full support for reactive programming. We'll look at that in a minute. But we're going to use uh, data access as well. And in order for us to use data access, it has to be also reactive. We cannot afford uh, to have a blocking call to something like JDBC. I'm excited, I'm happy that Oracle has talked about their reactive JDBC driver, uh, and you know I hope that that will be available to all of us, but for now, it is not really production ready, right? One data. So we need to do some sort of data access, and we need to use something that supports data access. So how many of you are using Spring Data? Spring Data, okay. So. Spring Data is a, an umbrella project. It supports a lot of different choices, a lot of different options. Uh, we have support for reactive data access in Spring Data K. K is the name of the, uh, the release train. So the new release train has data access, reactive data access, a number of different options here. And uh, you know you can use reactive. Uh, you can use. Is that mine? Yeah. You can use reactive MongoDB. You can use reactive Cassandra, Couchbase. Uh, you can use Redis. There's a number of different projects in Spring Data that you can also work with inside of Spring Boot. But because Spring Boot is not GA yet, uh, we don't have all of them supported here as auto configurations. There's a number of good choices. All of them are very good. Uh, we will use uh, Reactive MongoDB because that's what I have on my local machine, and you know it's very popular. How many of you have ever, ever used Reactive MongoDB or MongoDB? Just Mongo. Yeah. There you go. So. MongoDB is, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> MongoDB, is, MongoDB is very nice. Uh, MongoDB is very nice. Thank you. MongoDB is very nice because, uh, you know, yeah. it's nice that there's a reactive version of MongoDB because of all the choices. 
when you want to lose all of your data, and you want to lose it reactively, there is nothing better than reactive MongoDB. Nothing. Right? If you want to keep your data, that's for some other database. But reactive MongoDB, it loses your data very, very quickly. It's very reactively. Right? So we like that. So we're going to use that. Um, what else do we need? I guess that's it. Oh, do you want to? Uh, I was thinking about doing this in Kotlin. How many of you have ever used Kotlin before? Does anybody mind? Can I use Kotlin? Yes. Okay. okay. It's basically the same as Java, but there's some nice DSLs here. So we'll use that. We're going to hit generate. And that gives me a zip file. Uh, well, hopefully. <laughs> uh oh. Who's downloading everything? <laughs> CD downloads. <laughs> to cause more trouble. All right, so we don't have a lot of time. So first things first, this is a Spring Boot application. Um, I'm going to build a Spring Boot application, and I'm going to use some features that are in Spring 5, including support for functional beam definitions. So we use an initializer element. We're going to come back to this in a second. right? Keep in mind, at the end of the day, Spring just contains knowledge of all of your, app of all of your objects and how they are wired together. And they can, it can do things for you based on that knowledge. So all you need to do is to provide it beam definitions. You can do this using Java configuration or XML. Don't use it. Don't use XML. Uh, and you can use a number of other options as well, including this beams definition DSL. So this is a DSL that's it's based in Kotlin, right? You can get something very similar to this uh, using Java, but it's not as succinct, it's not as um, quick as in Kotlin. So this is actually type safe. You can see it says beams, right? This is actually a, a Kotlin extension. And uh, I'm going to create a DSL here. And what I want to do is I want to create uh, an application that manages data of a certain type. So I'm going to create a data class. This is going to be a car. And a car will have a primary key of type string that is nullable. And they'll have a name of type string that is also nullable. Right? So you can see uh, there's a lot of things that are happening here. I'm going to make this a spring data document. And those this... can actually be vowels, right? They can right. be immutable if you want. Oh, yeah. Good point. So what we're going to say here is, we have told Kotlin that we want, two, we want an object that has getters and setters and two string and equals. All of that is done for me with this, the data, the data annotation. Can you see that in the back? Is it too small? Should I make it plug on? OK. Font. OK, we try again. 30. How's that? All right, like that? Okay, good. So we have a, a data class here. And the class uh, has properties. It has two properties. The first property is an ID. The ID is of type string, but it can be set to null. That's what this question mark means. Why what? Because it can be. Right? It's null by default. And the, type, the, co the compiler, the type system, cares about nullability. The compiler can prevent me from making things null by accident. 
about are you shooting uh, to specify that it could be a What? Well, it's going to be null before we write it to the framework, right? We, we, have to call, we have to call save into the database. Before that, it's going to be null, right? So it has to be changed. Um, okay, so there's that, right? Now, that's our data class. In order to save instances, in order to work with instances of this type, I'll create a repository. And this is going to extend the reactive Mongo repository support in Spring Data. It's going to manage entities of type car, whose primary key is a type string. Now, I'm extending the reactive Mongo repository. This is very similar to regular repositories. It has methods like save, insert, you know, reach, find all, etc. But it returns a publisher. So this publisher is of type flux. This comes from the reactor project. The reactor project is part of, it's a pivotal project. It is the basis for Spring 5 Web Flux, the Spring Web Flux module in Spring 5. This implements the publisher type from the Reactive Streams initiative. The contract is very simple. It, it says, I'm going to produce data. I'm going to produce lots of values, zero or a billion values. And the consumer, the subscriber, can say, I want only five records or 10 records. I want a million records, but no more. It can, it can say, I'm only able to handle this many records. And so you can never overwhelm the consumer. The consumer controls the rate of consumption. Because the consumer controls the rate of consumption, it can say, no, I'm not ready. This is called back pressure. And this helps you build systems that are scalable. They can do, uh, they can handle more load because it cannot be, you know, overrun. You cannot overwhelm them. The other nice thing about having a publisher is that the publisher, it can, it can produce values forever. So if you have, uh, you know, a, a million records, you don't want to say select all and then just return the results. You, you, or maybe a billion records, it would be too much. But with a publisher, I can stream the data. Another nice benefit of this is that I get a callback. The subscriber is given a notification whenever there is a new record. So it's like a completable future. I get a callback whenever there's a new value. Except it goes on forever, right? As long as there is data that's in that publisher, I get new records. And the benefit is that while in between the notifications, you know, I get a record here, and then five seconds later, another record here. <coughs> in between, I can use asynchronous I.O. I can say, okay, I'm not going to keep the thread open. The thread, I'll give the thread to something else. So I can be very efficient. If you have a regular web server, you have only, you know, maybe a hundred threads, whatever. You have only so <coughs> you have a limited amount of threads. Those threads can go you they can be used for something else. Right? So you can use those other threads to handle other incoming requests while the data is, is still being processed. So you can have a publisher on the side, the selector thread for Tomcat or whatever, it can allow more requests to come in. So we can have this now. And what I want to do is I want to create an endpoint uh, that has all that endpoint. I want to have an endpoint that has all that data. So we're, we're going to create some data in a minute here. Right? But first, let's create the, web, the rest endpoint and get that out of the way. Right? So I'm going to create a bean, our first bean. And this bean is going to be a functional reactive web endpoint. I could, of course, I could say class, uh, cla whoa, whoa. I could say class car uh, rest controller, like this. And I can tell uh, Spring to inject the car repository, like that, right? That's a constructor here. I'm telling it in the constructor. <coughs> you can say it like this. Uh, and I can create an endpoint that looks like this. Cars, fun, cars equals this dot car repository dot find all, right? And that would work. That's fine. But I think this is a little much for what we're trying to do. We can use a more functional reactive style. Here I can say cars, uh, like this, and actually this is going to be using a DSL in Kotlin as well. There's a, a similar DSL in Java, the uh, functional reactive endpoints. So I'm going to say, get cars, and then when the request comes in, my job is to return a response. So I can say, return a response. But of course, in order for me to produce the response of publisher, it needs to be a publisher of some sort, I need to use the uh, car repository. So I'm going to use the car repository, I'm going to tell Spring, to find a reference to that car repository in the application context. Here, I'm basically, I'm telling it to inject that bean in the configuration. And I can say car repository at find all. All right? 
So there's my very simple endpoint. That will work, but there is no data yet. So let's create some data and install it into the database, or ins install it into the database so that we have something to work with. So I'm going to say uh, val names, or cars, equals flux.just, and we need some good and bad cars. What's it? Some good ones are Bugatti, like that. I think there's a, there's no H. Oh, sorry. No H. Is that right? Okay, there we go. Sorry. Uh, obviously, the Volkswagen Volkswagen bus is the best car, right? So right. there's that. Uh, let's see what else. Um, the uh, BMW, I guess that's a good one. Well, no. Wait. Okay. Here we are. Very good. What else? We need some bad ones, right? So like a Ford Pinto. Oh yeah. <laughs> Toyota, like that. Yeah. Infinity. And some bad ones. The Pinto. Ford Pinto. I guess the Pinto. There you go. There's also a Yugo. How do you spell that? O H U G O. Y U G O. Y U G O. Yeah. Okay. And then what else do we want? Uh, what? Uh, what? That's a good one. Yeah, that's a very good one. Tesla. Any other, anybody, anybody else know some bad ones? Right. The Gremlin? Gremlin, right. There's that. Some big, on the list that I found of like worst cars, Hummer was actually on there. Yeah, Hummer. It's a yeah. big bad waste. Some people like it, some people don't. Right? Whatever. All right, so we've got some names, right? Now I'm going to turn those names into records in the database. So I'll say car, and I'll say that the name equals <coughs> the implicit variable, right? So if I can, say, I can say, map it to a name, and then this is the name. But I only have one parameter. This is a waste, you know? Why? I can just call it it. It means the same thing. It's the string in the publisher. Okay? And now what I want to do is I want to now map that into a data, into a record that's going to be saved in the database. Right? So I'll inject that here as well, the car repository. And I'll say uh, car repository.save, passing in it. It is the car. Okay? And um, <coughs> What I want to do now is I want to actually save all of this data. There we are. I want to save all that data in the database. And I can say over here, I can say uh, car repository. And what I want to do is I want to first delete everything in the database. I want to have a clean database, right? You know, in English they say that a broken clock is true, it's correct, two times a day, right? By accident, sometimes, and again, it's an accident, by accident, sometimes MongoDB saves your data, like a broken clock. It doesn't mean to. Most of the time, it will lose your data, but sometimes. It's like twice a day. Exactly, sometimes, not very often. So we need to delete everything, first of all. Then we will write the data to the database, like so. Then we will find the records, car repository that find all. All right? And then I want to print everything out. So I'm going to say print all the records out, like that. Okay, so we've, we've saved some data, we've turned it into some records in the database, uh, etc. And then we're going to, what we're doing is we're telling, we're telling um, Spring WebFlux, we're telling it that this is a publisher of car. Even though I have executed this code, oh, what is this? Oh, flat map. Even though I have executed this code here, this does not, this does not actually result in any action. You have to trigger the sequence. You have to activate the sequence, just like in the Java 8 stream API. So this is what you know. This says go. Let it go, right? Before you run that, nothing happens. All right. So let's run this code and see what we get. Hey Josh, mm -hmm. did you know that it is a criminal offense to drive around a dirty car in Russia? Ah, really? <laughs> so there we go. There's our data in the database. Um. All that's been written to the database. Now, I need to. I want to be able to. I want to be able to make this service easy to find for other people, right? Other people, other microservices will look for this service. So we're, we're going to do that. We're going to make it easy for other microservices to find this service, so that if the service falls down, other services can find it by. Uh, you know, they can load balance to other nodes. In a in a dynamic cloud-based environment, it's not very useful to use DNS. DNS tells me where something lives, but it does not tell me if it lives. So I'm, it's like knowing the address, right? You may know my address, but I'm not at home right now. I'm here in beautiful Morocco. 
So if you knock on the door, no response. So we can use a service registry to ask, is that service there? And you can ask, how many instances of the service are there? And you can control the load balancing and routing algorithm. So we're going to support that. We're going to create a Eureka service registry, Eureka-service, using Eureka server. I'm going to hit generate. And this one, I'll, I will write this code in Java for you. Thank you. I think you can give it like the internet connection to see the because I can't find it. What? Oh, okay. Internet connection. Let's let, let's do it in his time. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm running. I gotta keep going faster. So we're gonna create a Eureka service using Java. Okay. So hold on. Ready? Ready? Enable. Eureka server. Okay, there's my Java code for the day. So now, the only thing we need after that is to tell it to run on port 8761. We need to tell it to register to not register itself uh, with Eureka. So register uh, equals false, and then uh, register with uh, let's see, fetch remote registry enter with Eureka equals false. All right. So we start that. Now that's going to start up. It's going to be a service registry. And in order for my microservice to work with the registry, I have to add the Spring Cloud Starter Eureka client to the class path. In order to do this, I need the Spring Cloud dependency. So I'll go back here and add this to the class path. I forgot to add it before. And I'll add the Spring Cloud version for the properties up here. All right. And I will. There we go, Spring Cloud that version. And now, once I have this, I will go ahead and use the Spring Cloud Netflix client. <coughs> Spring Cloud Starter Netflix client. Let's just say Starter Eureka. Okay, now we can say Netflix uh, Eureka. Is that right? There it is. So I've got that on the class path now. Yes, I think I do. Uh, let me see, Eureka Discovery Client. No. Let's just try this one then. There we go. That'll work for now. And so now that I've got this in the class path, I need to tell my microservice what its name is. So I'm going to call this the car catalog hyphen service. And we'll restart this application, and it will register itself in the registry. It will say, I'm here. If you need me, find me at this location or it will fail because I have forgot to kill the other instance. So you must say single instance only. <coughs> Whoa. Spring on one touch, no such method. And it's mm -hmm. Initializer, Spring Application Builder. You don't need that. That's gone. Yeah, well, I mean, we can try it. Spring Application Builder. To do. Oh yeah, I can, I can cheat. It's the dependency.